Uh, I, Dr. Jyoti, EC member of IIT Delhi Alumni Association and also the convener for uh, She Inspire. Welcome you all in this session. I feel privileged to host this event, which is graced by uh, the presence of our worthy panelists for today, along with President Sir, uh, IIT Delhi Alumni Association and with EC members and worthy audience. So before we step into the uh, session, I would like to give a, a brief introduction of the speakers for to the, today's session. Uh, first in series, we have Dr. Archana Gulati, but she will join us uh, late, so I'll introduce her at that time. And uh, uh, we have with us uh, uh, right now Ms. Uh, Sonia Sodhi, who has pursued MSc in Applied Physics from IIT Delhi in 1998. She is the industry speaker and thought leader on climate risk and sustainability and model risk management. Over two decades of international experience working in global functions and managing large-scale strategic uh, transformation initiatives in financial uh, section. It's our privilege to have with us Dr. Dibharati uh, Bhattacharji. She pursued her PhD in textile technology from IIT Delhi in 2007. She is senior DGM at LNT Defense. And she is also the recipient of uh, Fulbright Nehru Postdoc uh, Research Fellowship, which is one of the most uh, pre prestigious fellowship among our researchers. And it is my pleasure to extend a warm welcome to Ms. Papia Mandal, who pursued her MTech from IIT Delhi. She is General Manager, Manager at EIL, Engineer uh, India Limited. Presently, she is ha handling one of the biggest refineries of the world, uh, the Ngote Refinery, Nigeria along with some domestic refinery upgradation projects as structural team uh, leader. So I welcome you all in this session. And on behalf of IIT Delhi Alumni Association, I request uh, President Sir, Mr. Sanjay Jain to give a brief of uh, this initiative, uh, She Inspire. Welcome. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Jyoti. Welcome all the panelists and esteemed gathering of this webinar. I will not take much time as this session belongs to the remarkable ladies here. I'll just say a few words about She Inspires. She Inspires is an initiative which aims to empower and inspire women globally. This motivates women to believe in them and go for the patients. Patients. She Inspires highlights the achievement and stories of women who have overcome challenges and barriers to succeed and create impact in their communities and beyond. By sharing their stories, uh, she inspires hopes to motivate uh, and inspire other women to follow their dreams and achieve their goals. The movement also provides a platform for women to connect, share their experience and support each other. She inspires a force to change and uh, promote gender equality. As such, we must take bold and decisive actions to ensure that women have equal access to education, health care, economic opportunities, and political model. To lead this important initiative, we must engage all sectors of society in efforts to advance women's rights and dignity. With a, concert, with a concerted efforts and commitment to change, we can create a world where all women are empowered to thrive and contribution to a better future for all. We at IIT Delhi Alumni Association started the initiative She Inspire, where female alumni of IITD share their stories of their journey to inspire all the world to lead to all women to lead the world. In the last, I would quote famous words of Maya Angelou and American civil rights activist. Each time a woman stands for herself, she stands up for all women. That's all I wish to say. Over to Dr. Jyoti to carry this program forward. Thank you, sir, uh, for uh, this uh, note. And now I request Ms. Sonia Sodhi to share her experiences of life, how uh, life at IIT have influenced her personal and professional life. We all would like to hear from her, Ms. Sonia. I, I thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak to such distinguished uh, people here and also 
uh, as the president said, it's also a platform to uh, uh, to create an impact and uh, motivate uh, other women and young aspirants who want to uh, want to grow further. Uh, I want to share one small thing that I am a 1998 pass out. So interestingly, I uh, complete 25 years of passing out IIT this year. So I, I, I think it is close to my convocation ceremony date even, which happens in July, August. Uh, uh, so I, I have fond memories of IIT uh, where Delhi, uh, I'm a Delhiite, I, I have, now been outside India for about 23 years. Um, but I would say that if I would not have been an IATN, my journey would not have been so easy. Um, IAT makes you um, strong and uh, look at it, uh, life from a very different perspective. At least the time when I was uh, doing my master's in physics, um, I don't know how the combination is today, but my batch had more women than men in the class. So uh, at least in the applied physics, which was strange, we all uh, were, um, you know, friends and we are today friends also with, uh, you know, we are now in different parts of the world. And I have to say this to you that if I come to Delhi, Half of my class is not in Delhi. We are we are actually brain drained that time. But looking from another perspective, we also bring knowledge and uh, expertise back to India. So that is my uh, purpose uh, that I do. Um, as I said, that if I would not be an IITN, uh, my journey would be very different. I moved to Singapore in two thousand. Uh, that is the time I moved, and. Um, you know, uh, this is, I'm just sharing with uh, you guys. Uh, when you apply for a resident card or for an economic, uh, you know, uh, e employment pass or something like that, Singapore government at that time had such an esteemed reputation for IIT Delhi. And we were not even, you know, we are three or four people in Singapore that time and everybody sailed through pretty smooth. Otherwise it's very difficult to get those bureaucratic papers uh, done at Singapore. So that's uh, one of the personal story that I want to share, especially those who are still in IIT and are, um, uh, are studying at IIT. So please, uh, I would say, I, I read somewhere also recently that IIT Delhi is one of the top 50 universities. It's ranked at number 48. So that brings me quite a proud moment for my university. Uh, personal experiences further that I want to share is that, especially for women, you know, I have to say this, that men usually have this bye-bye kind of uh, uh, syndrome where they are always, uh, oh, you do this for me and I do this for you. We women don't do that. And that is like, a humme uh, I, I, I don't know how to say it, but we need to promote each other just like the men do. And when we talk about connectivity and mentorship, if we women start supporting each other rather than, I, I'm sorry to say, rather than pulling each other down, we would grow tremendously. And this is something that I learned when I was doing the leadership course at uh, Rotterdam University. And I was like, you know, there is, there is people, racism, there is, you know, how to break the glass ceiling and all that. And and in that, you know, I, at IIT, I never felt that I am a woman or I am, uh, you know, different. And the, the, the person was, the teacher was from South Africa. And what he said is, this is what I want to share with you, which, 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 which blew my mind. He said, um, you know, there can be two people who both are doing engineering, okay? One is a white guy and one is a black guy. Who do you think has, who do you think is more intelligent or smarter? 
And he said, the person who is coming from, well, black is an example, but you could also think of a person coming from a lower economic background or from a you know class or from a rural area. Of course, the second one, because he has accomplished many barriers before he has reached that stage. So uh, that, that stuck me, that is one. Uh, story that I want to share and second thing I want to share is that you know as a woman uh, coming from an Indian uh, ethnicity we have two biases not just a bias of uh, being a woman but also the first thing we are uh, the race bias is always there so we are fighting the race bias and we are fighting the woman bias so we are fighting two biases think about that they are not yet, the women in, in, in the Western world themselves are fighting for their own glass ceiling to be broken. And we as uh, Indian women have two, two biases to be broken. One, that we are a woman and B, that we are a woman from another ethnicity. So be prepared for that. Be prepared that there is a bias that is, uh, that is working against you or that may work against you. And you need to uh, probably work even more uh, harder to achieve your goals. Um, that's, uh, that's uh, for me, I think for now, but of course I can surely chip in later if there are more questions or any insights. I think I've uh, given some good uh, yeah. insights into my experience. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Miss Sonia. Uh, I think I will discuss a few questions in the end of the session and uh, uh, we would like to hear uh, now uh, Dr. Dibharati Patacharji. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jyoti. And um, good evening to all my co-speakers, uh, Dr. Archana, whenever she joins. Uh, Sonia, you gave such an eloquent talk. It's really nice to hear from you. And Papia also looking forward to your talk as well. Uh, Mr. S.K. Jain, the president, and uh, Mr. Pankaj. And also I thank Mr. Satish for giving me this opportunity to speak to the IITNs present and past and their family members. So the brief of this talk as was told to me was to share my journey and the role played by IIT in shaping my life. And it's a good topic because for the first time, I it made me look back to last uh, two decades of my life. And it's been a complex maze, you know, we've got great opportunities, sometimes crushing defeats, uh, good risks, bad decisions, a real roller coaster. So, I mean, if I, if I trace my journey, I wanted to become a cardiac surgeon when I was in school. And I registered for BTech in textile engineering at MS University of Baroda, assuming that I will get a job easily. And because, well, it was in Gujarat and Gujarat is a textile manufacturing hub. And I changed track and I did post-graduation and followed by a stint in the shop floor. Uh, then I again changed and got into hardcore research at IIT, after which I joined DRDO to work as a scientist in uh, high-performance textile materials. But in last more than a decade, I ended up um, working in ballistic testing, evaluation of armament, small ammunitions, uh, small arms ammunition, weapons, vehicle, personal armor systems. So like nothing of textile remains now. And recently I took another plunge to enter the corporate world. And now I'm in LNT defense and looking after uh, development projects in the guns and armored systems business. And my work has taken me to places like Hoshiarpur in Punjab, Ch Kanpur, Chandigarh, where I was posted while in DRDO. And then uh, Shrivanham, which is a small village near Oxford. And now I'm in Mumbai. So. There are three base, main organizations which have shaped me. One was my school, which was Kendra Vidyalaya KV. I'm a proud KVite. IIT Delhi and DRDO. And all these organizations have molded me in their own way. IIT Delhi, as Sonia was also saying, it provided an overwhelming sense of non-entitlement. Like when I joined MTech, I was one of the toppers in my college. And I was a bit cocky that you know I knew all the formulas and the theories and all. And one semester in IIT Delhi and all the pseudo confidence got flushed down the drain. I was barely scraping through to get enough CGPA and not get thrown out of the institute. And for the first time I faced the concept of open book exam where 90% of the class, which included me of course, failed. 
I really got the first taste of failures in the institute. And believe me that it also included a lesson that it's absolutely okay to fail and it is not the end of life. So I actually failed in my first minor in C++, but I ended up getting a decent B plus score in the majors. So, and we also studied varieties of subjects. Like during my PhD, I managed to get a certificate course. I mean, see, the thing is that the um, learning system at IIT Delhi was so deliciously wide and free. You know, I, I got a certificate course in German, in the beginner's uh, German language, beginner's course. I would audit uh, courses on CFD in the morning and do a film and philosophy course in the evening. And uh, in the at IIT, I learned the non-importance of scores. I mean, of course, scores are important, but more than that, it is important to absorb the the subject that we are working uh, that that we are uh, learning. And IIT provided safe places to me. So, Kailash, the mighty Kailash, I think Sonia would uh, agree with me. Uh, so. Like the the war cry of Sir Kailash, Kailash ka in high hai, it still resonates. At that time, we had to compete with seven boys hostel in all the fields, and the odds were hugely against us. So one thing about these competitions were that uh, Kailash was never given any brownie points for being the only girls hostel, and the competitions would be fierce and intense, but the wins were fair and just. But the best thing about being the only girls hostel in these competitions were that we were always there for each other. So the women of Kailash stood up for each other. We pushed and pulled one another into the victories. We fought with the boys. We stood and fought together. And so, I mean, now when, I mean, my colleagues and my lady officers, colleague lady officers, we are defending another, you know, colleague and all. I always remember, you know, the fights that we used to have, you know, the inter-hostel rivalries that we used to have. And we used to be, used to be the only, you know, girls hostel, you know, together. So, uh, so to touch upon the next part of uh, this talk, that is how the Institute has played uh, in my life. I just, I have just penned down four, four uh, things. One is simplification. So Professor Kale, SR Kale from Mechanical Engineering Department, once I was giving a, a presentation and he, he told me, he said, do not show me colorful and wavy graphs and intimidating equations. You explain the physics behind the phenomena. And by physics, he meant the mechanics, first principles, and all those things. And it's a very important lesson because sometimes we get very overwhelmed in the complexity of the situation. So, and I have I have learned to actually break down a complex thing into simple things, simple uh, activities, and every simple activity problem gets a simple solution. So that way, it's it's much more manageable. And I guess all the you know, so-called project management and all those things, they all say the same thing. Just break down a complex situation, a complex problem into simple problems. Second, very important was failures. As I said, bad results, bad data. So I have done my MTech in which we did a we did a, thes a thesis dissertation, but it was not that. But the PhD dissertation was much more uh, crucial. So I had to write a MATLAB code of around around five four hundred lines or so, you know, and and it was a mixture of subroutines from various other codes, and uh, sometimes you know it would give ridiculous results, it would give you know non uh, results, you know, and uh, it it would frustrates you to no it frustrates you to no end, and you just feel like giving it up. Sometimes even the experiments also throw absurd details. So what we used to do is we used to uh, I mean, we used to uh, reject the absurd data as rogue values and to fit the rest into the hypothesis. So my PhD supervisor, Professor V.K. Kothari, would never allow it. He would always say that if you have done the experiment properly, if you have prepared it properly, you have done it properly, then whatever data you are getting has no business of being wrong or fluke. So something you are missing in uh, you know, designing the experiments. So, uh, so I mean, and a couple of times it so happened that I had, I did not consider a factor while designing the experiment. And because of that, that particular change or the particular rogue data was coming. So uh, sometimes we do come across very absurd, illogical, you know, finding which make no sense to our already preconceived ideas. So it's always important not to discard them without a second look. So this is one thing which I have learned. And just like failures, 
one also need need not one does not have to be too cocky or over confident over successes because you know there's something called an optimism bias because because you have succeeded previously you assume that you will succeed now but sometimes when you don't then you hit a i mean you you are you know deep in the dumps so you would all it's always good to have a balanced approach not only while taking decisions but also at the outcomes so my professor used to say don't dance at good results and don't cry at bad results so be balanced all the time and uh, fourth thing is hard work so nothing beats hard work uh, one has to give all that one has got whichever position rank level we are in and uh, we we have to give something for some time before we can reap the benefits and it also helps us uh, help you uh, grounded and the initial months can be very terrible and racked with self doubts and daunting but once you have done things in your own hands with your own hands you get a different level of confidence and you take more challenges so i can go on about how the journey has shaped iit but i guess that was a crux of it i again thank you the organizers and i congratulate all the speakers in all the sessions for doing such awesome work i thank you all good evening yeah. Uh, yeah thank you dr devarathi for sharing your stories from uh, you being a textile undergraduate to ballistic missile and then corporate life i also see an interesting thing in your linkedin profile you have been also a volunteer for marine uh, conservation uh, coral reef uh, protection uh, yes yes some initiative yes. yeah yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> uh okay one thing i wanted to clear dr jyoti i am not a recipient of a fulbright nehru award <laughs> oh did, is it too? Yeah, yeah i did uh, i did apply for it but i couldn't get it so. okay okay i just uh, i noted down in uh, from your linkedin profile maybe i uh, okay. Okay. i yeah. confused with something else right okay. yeah okay um next uh, we have uh, miss uh, papia mandal with us uh welcome uh, ms papia and please you share your experiences also good evening everyone thank you uh, dr choti thank you all the uh, panelists uh, ms sonia dr devarathi and uh, dr archana who is yet to join and thank you iit all the organizer the uh, president of this session for giving us this beautiful platform to share our thoughts so i will share two things like i will shorten my journey but i have some message to give to the young generation or the aspirants so that also i like to share obviously as the, as this is sonia also said uh, because of iit what i am today is i am today because without that perhaps the journey would not have been so smooth after that we struggled a lot and especially my aspiration was totally different pardon me for the background noise i when i entered engineering i decided to be a faculty in the engineering firm but somehow at the final year i got i got direct admission in iisc bangalore things would have been different but i got uh, an opportunity in engineers india limited and my professor head of the department said go ahead with engineers india limited because this is a great job you might not get it later so don't lose this opportunity i went there but every time i was missing that thing that i have not done mtech i have not done mtech so then i took a break and after couple of years maybe 6 7 years i decided to join mtech i got admission very easily but it was not easy because getting detached from the study and then just dealing with all these difficult formulas all this so just my uh, one thing was advantages for me because of my industry experience some of the things which were related to topics which were related to industry i found them little easy but overall like dr devarathi also said it was pretty difficult and now when i look back i think how could i do it so regarding my experience i like to share one thing my thesis guide was professor tk datta he is the most proficient professor in not only in wind dynamics but all sort of structural dynamics and what not 
so that was a final uh, thesis was going on during uh, before just printing it was evening i was day scholar i was not in the hostel so i drove uh, to uh, iit it was around 6 6 30 i just i was happily showing that this is my uh, draft paper just see i'll go go and get it for printing and further on he just he just rejected my thesis this is not the conclusion what you have written this is nothing and he gave me a list of things which has to be done. My face was something different. He could have understood because two, three days was there in the uh, submission date. And there are so many things. Then perhaps he might have understood my views. He said, go home and do the analysis. And once you complete, you call me. Whatever time it is, I will be awake and I'll be waiting for your call. So I came back to Dwarka, I did all the analysis, and by that time, it was one o'clock in the night, I gave him a call, he discussed all the results, and then he gave go ahead that, yeah, now you can finalize your, uh, your uh, views and just the conclusion, and then you can go for the printing. So that was really great. And I, I am very happy that I think that this is a lifetime opportunity that I got guidance from him. And overall IIT experience was amazing. Now, second thing is I will not elaborate much on how IIT has shaped me, but I will say as a part of aspiration, why we are in this session, why we need to inspire women, why? So I will just tell you some statistical figures which might give some indication why we are here. In 2022, average women earn 17% less than men. That is for every dollar men has earned, women earn only 83 cents. This is not my data. This is as per Forbes data, general pay gap statistics of 2023. Isn't it really fair to earn exactly the way you are doing? And just because of women, can you allow to get little less? I, I think that is not, that is not, that should not be the case. So gender gap, pay gap is definitely a pressing issue. And in relation to that, I will talk about another paper of Harvard, which says nice girls don't ask. So as uh, Ms. Sonia said, like women don't have that bhai bhai or brother brother thing. But I think this is also one of the root cause because we, we don't do proper negotiation for our salary, for our promotion. We are very good at giving our best and doing best at the organization. But when time comes to ask for the reward, then we undermine our potential. And then we don't ask for that what we deserve. So why that is? Why that inhibition? We'll have to come out of that inhibition. That is one of the problem. Next thing, as per global statistics, in the primary level, women are just 3% behind men. And in the higher education level, they are 5% ahead of that. Even then, globally, only 32% women are found in the leadership role. And though in India, it is little better, 36%. But one more thing, when entry level, almost 48% women are there, but at the final level, top level, it, it converges to 26%. Why this is so? People might say this is because of leaky pipeline, but who forces to leak? Why not to stay in the stream? If we consider about the biological construct, it is just nine months or maybe few more months at the max, but rest of the life is there with women. Who stops them to shine? So more, more or less, Many of the times we give this terminology, which are very famous with management, but we need to look at the depth that what is the background of this. Again, next thing, the contribution of women in GDP is just 37%. Why it is so? Because when we have done higher study or any study, there are ample amount of aid has been given in form of some subsidy or not. Even IIT also, there are too much subsidized rate. We are not paying the full like the private colleges even. 
but why we're contributing only 37 percent so my humble submission to all those educated women just think about it and just give it back to the society and just contribute to the national economy global economy and next thing is whoever are not fortunate to get that education they can also join the workforce in whatever manner they can do it in their own capabilities and i feel that women have equally equal skills education qualification everything it just requires them to know about their potential and map their way to being leaders instead of waiting others to create opportunity for them. I feel this is mostly a mind game. When women will learn to win this mind game, then perhaps these challenges will get eradicated. That's all. Thank you once again, everyone, to give me this opportunity to put forward my perspective on this topic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Papia and uh, Mandal. And uh, you have described very well uh, how women are facing the challenges in their personal life as well as in their uh, professional life. Women do take career break because of uh, marriages and uh, maternity leave and they have to start from the zero again and again in professional life they have their own uh, uh, challenges. Uh, what do you think that organizing such uh, events on women empowerment, they are helpful in uh, uh, this uh, women empowerment really, or it is just like, a, you know, show kind of thing. So what do you think? Directed to me? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I will just before answering this, I will ask two questions. In the nation, where the president and finance minister is woman. Do we really need any reservation? Do we need anything? Mm -hmm. And talking about empowerment, I, I remind, it reminds me of Professor Nimruji of IIM Calcutta, who taught us empowering means demarcating that women are lacking something. So that mm -hmm. additional is to be given. Are we lacking something? We also have potentials. Maybe our, our leadership traits are different than men, but they are also unique and they are equally good. Say for example, women are inclusive in nature in leadership roles, but while running an organization, it's not a battlefield. Inclusive nature is very, is required and it is equally good for success of the organization. And we are in a democratic country. So who stops to be inclusive? So I don't think, but yes, there are need because women are having some inhibitions that might have caused because of the stereotypical mindset in their upbringing process. Generally, women are related to the arts, beauty, and all this stuff, whereas the boy childs are related to technology, strength, yeah. this. Mm -hmm. So this thing gives a feeling that we are perhaps not good or something. Exactly. And if you mm -hmm. see in STEM also, women's contribution are very less. Only 28% of women are in STEM when they're doing academically so good. Why so less percentage? Because maybe that bias. So that bias is to be broken. So what I feel, and as the negotiation part, I have said, one more problem is there with women. We want to be perfect. And thank you, Debarati, for saying that <laughs> failures is okay. But most of the women want to be very strict about scrutinizing themselves in their own lens. Whatever small mistake they do, they hold on to that. And that creates a lack in confidence. So I would feel that we need to come out of all this bias and for that, we will have to again and again remind them of their huge potential and their credibility, what they can do. I feel this terminology, women empowerment, can be replaced with mentorship. And what IIT is doing, she uh, inspires. It is very good forum because from our journey, maybe some other young aspirants will understand that how, how good they are at their work, how potentially strong they are. So that reminding process has to be on. That is my views. 
Yes, thank you, Ms. Papia. Uh, uh, Jan sir has raised his hand and, uh, and Ms. Sonia also. So first we'll uh, prefer to our guest <laughs> to hear. Ms. Sonia, uh, you want to say something? Yes, uh, so um, I, I think uh, on the question of, uh, you know, uh, reserving or reservations for women, um, there probably, uh, Papia, I have a different view than yours. And uh, I, I do think, uh, uh, you know, a reservation for women would help women uh, to be uh, not alone, especially in the, uh, you know, as you very well said that in the entry level jobs, women are all there. But as we go forward, there are not many more women. But if there is reservations, if there is a chance available to those women who are not going forward, then you won't feel alone. Uh, this is what I heard from one of the CEOs that I work for or CROs I work for. And she said, you know, Sonia, in that meeting for uh, where all men are there in the boardroom I'm the only woman and it feels alone and that is something that has to change whether be it via reservation because yes we have uh, uh, it's not just an India problem it is a worldwide problem where women are not growing and uh, it is it is basically uh, going back to the problem of uh, mentorship and lead uh, examples that could be given to these uh, to by women for women so I, I, I personally think uh, at some stage in the beginning you need to create that space of reservation and you once you see that okay it's now building up then you can remove so it's not re only reason that we are less or more uh, or we are less in something that's why there is a reservation I don't see it as a less but as a as a opening of an opportunity to people to women and once the, the there is you know that motivation is there then you can remove that that's one thing um, but one thing I really agreed on with you which I wanted to say also was that yes we women have been from the beginning told a Barbie view you know <laughs> of course there is a Barbie movie but you know you need to look perfect you need to be everything should be 100% okay and we judge each other so much you know that's why I said like in women we should not judge each other we should support each other and that supporting factor should improve um, amongst us also and then we should not find out critic about each other and this is an important lesson for women uh, uh, ourselves we, we are uh, critics of the other woman at the first stage itself so if we start criticizing each other then we can't support each other and that critic has to stop for us to grow further that's what i wanted to add on yeah thank you sonia uh sanjay sir you want to say something i think uh, uh i wanted to say a few two things one is covered by uh, sonia she has already said it that your vision is there to bring them to at that level it is must it should be there and the second part is which is very important i don't think women need women they are already empowered but only thing they need to be reminded about that is they they under, underestimate themselves that's the worst part hamare yahan kya hai ma durga hai durga shakti matlab we we do so many things. Hum, hum, hamara koi bhi program start hota hai, we say Matra Shakti. So they are already empowered, but they need to be reminded about their powers. That's very important. And um, these two points I wanted to say, one is covered by Sonia very nicely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. And uh, I think uh, Madam Archana Gulati has also joined us. Uh, are you there, ma'am? Yeah, can you hear me and see me? Yeah, yeah. yes, I can see. Uh, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I, uh, I would uh, uh, like to welcome you in this session. Uh, and uh, I express my gratitude that you accept our invitation. And I would like to give a brief introduction of you to the audience. Um, 
uh, we have Dr. Arjuna Gulati, who has uh, pursued her PhD in telecommunication technology and management from IIT Delhi. She is retired Indian uh, Civil Services Officer 1989 batch. Uh, she retired at additional secretary level and she has been advisor on uh, digital communication policy and program to government of India for 30 years. She teach now uh, uh, technology and competition uh, uh, policy and law at the reputed universities and institutions. Welcome, ma'am. And uh, we would like to hear uh, from you now. Thank you, Jyoti. Uh, so basically, um, I guess you want to hear about my experiences. Um, well, to begin with, let me tell you about my PhD experience, which was very tough because I was doing this as a part-time scholar along with my work. And I was a pretty senior officer, so the work was very challenging. Uh, so, you know, the coursework was bad enough and you had to come for classes for two years. But even after that, I think there were many moments when I actually felt like giving up. And at mm. that stage, I think it was a lot of my women friends who actually encouraged me, uh, who had done the IIT, uh, you know, part-time PhD earlier, who said, no, you can do it. And I think I must, I'm very grateful to my supervisor also, who, you know, he said, you know, Archana, you're a civil services officer, and this is not rocket science, <laughs> <laughs> you know, writing your PhD thesis. And it took me some time, but I think it gave me a lot of um, experience in terms of perseverance and grit and determination. And it actually changed my life a lot because I think it was a part of the decision to take voluntary retirement uh, after 31 years that I could have carried on for another six years. And I was at the top of my career. But I think uh, because of the experience that I had in academics, I was interested and I'm now teaching very happily. I really enjoy teaching. I'm also consulting and I'm doing a whole lot of other things which I wouldn't have been able to do when I was in the civil services. So yeah, IIT was a, it was a wonderful experience and it's a, it's, a, it's a great place to do your PhD. Um, is there anything else in, in particular you'd like me to touch upon? Yeah, um, uh, I think our audience would be interesting to hear uh, if you can uh, elaborate something on how can we together create more opportunities for women? Uh, like you are in, uh, been uh, in uh, civil services, so I think uh, you're the right person <laughs> to elaborate on this. Well, I think the beginning is at home. So it is very important for parents to encourage girls to, you know, sort of do their, to just be themselves and to shine as I think uh, somebody was before me, the speaker was actually saying that, you know, it's not as if women uh, have any disadvantage. It is more societal. I think it is the encouragement that you get to study, to do your best, to be your best person, uh, which is very important and society plays a big role in this. But I think amongst us also to encourage each other, uh, to support each other is very important. So when I teach, for example, I very often notice that a girl student will put up a hand, but a boy will get up and start speaking. You know, so I always uh, say that, no, wait, wait a second, I think she wanted to say something. And it's basically that simple encouragement, because I think we just conditioned to, uh, you know, take second place, to be quiet, to not we, we've been told that, you know, you need to be gentle, you need to be nice. But you can be all those things. In fact, those are strengths which women actually do very well with, because we are very collaborative. We listen to others, we empathize. And I think that makes us great leaders. But it also sometimes makes us a little hesitant and underconfident. So I think we need to encourage each other and that's the best we can do for each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Dr. Devarati, would you like to add to this something? Yeah, so yeah, that's, uh, I mean, uh, Papia and Dr. Gulati, you have, and uh, Mr. Jain, you have spoken really uh, well about the inclusivity and the the requirement of women at the top to have more representation. And uh, I would agree with Sonia here also, because unless and until there are people at the top, there won't be any pull. Hmm. So, so that's never going to come unless we have role models, we have people, we have leaders, we have mentors who are women. Because there's, there is always, I mean, uh, men, I mean, all my mentors have been men. So, I mean, and I don't find anything different, but I do know that that's not enough. So, uh, 
so that that is why a little bit of that pull is required and that is why a little bit of that reservation that we are talking about but that reservation should not be on account of meritocracy you know so it's only when you know that the 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 woman whosoever has been selected for a top post and all the when she has cleared every other aspects then only she should she should be selected on the basis of her gender that's it so it's not that yes i have like you know a set of uh, people and i just pick up the you know we we just uh, pick and choose based on the gender that should never be there so there's always a balance that is there and uh, being a woman in a stem field as i mean in spite of the fact that we have been saying this thing for such a long time still we do not have enough representation of women in stem field and that is because of an inherent you know hesitation in the top leadership that we won't be able to take care of the you know the the grind and i'm sure i mean she is a gm of eil i mean i she i mean papi she must be you know doing all sorts of thing that even a man can't do so uh, i mean so that change if if that comes somehow and that will come if we are more people like papia and you know sonia are there they will say oh, why not we have we, we can have more women here so yes so we need more papias and more sonias and all in in the top most top levels so that the let the other people can come up yeah so that yeah, is my yes. yes yes you are uh, you all are right and i would like to add uh, one more thing like we should not uh, be looking for reservation we should be looking for the uh, excess of opportunities uh, rather than uh, getting some seat a uh, book for us we should uh, make sure that whatever opportunities are available we made it possible to that we get the excess of it because like um, there are so many uh, like uh, so many opportunities we can access easily but because of some constraint we cannot uh, uh, like uh, get that so the uh, thing should be in this way that the uh, that constraint must be removed for uh, us like we have so many constraint like sometime we have little kid that we cannot go to that place because of uh, uh, because there is no facility that uh, someone can uh, take care of uh, the child so uh, even though we are capable enough we are equally capable but we cannot access that opportunity because we are having some constraint so those constraint must be removed rather than uh, giving some reservation because in fact i feel uh, that reservation will uh, not let us to push our limit we will not be efficient enough we will not be able to identify our uh, strength if we will uh, get some kind of reservation so rather than uh working on reservation we must be working for the uh, removal of those constraint which uh, push us back which pull our leg so this uh, this is what i would like to say and um, uh, anything else anyone uh, any question from the audience uh, which uh, anyone like to interact with the panelists yeah i want to ask one question dr ji yeah about uh, 20 30 years back it was difficult yeah it was very uh, like male officers were not willing to report to any female officer who was senior to him has a thing changed now is there is some change um is that question addressed to me yeah <laughs> yeah it's completely changed because i think that i've never experienced anything of this sort uh in fact i have mentored a lot of uh, male juniors and uh, i think they look up to me a lot but you are right to some extent that in some fields particularly i would say stem uh, women are still rare uh, you know so not in the civil services as a whole that's certainly not a problem but i would say that you know uh, engineering fields etc because women are so rare uh it tends to be a little bit more over there but i think things are changing for the for the better mm -hmm. and i think which uh, it is very much for us to set an example and it's not as, to, as if to show that you know we are better than you but we just just as as human as anybody else and equally good at uh, you know uh, whatever we do uh but personally i have not experienced uh, this problem but i do appreciate that this can be there yani acceptance has increased over the years like initially about 30 years back there was very difficult when first time i had to report a, a female senior i was really was i was not 
so i am talking about my own experience yeah. but now the things are changing that's good oh, that is so nice of you to acknowledge that Uh, yeah, he has been very honest. Acknowledge this. Yeah, yeah, that's. Let me ask you a question. Then lately, I realized later I work with uh, senior female seniors, and I was very comfortable. But when first time I reported to her, so I felt like, "What's going on?" Your personal bias was in action. Your personal bias was in action. Yeah, of course, of course, yes, I agree with you, Sonia. Hundred percent, I agree with you. So that was. Uh, Uh, the, I was slightly immature. I was very young at that time. Was not able to understand things. But I am happy that things are changing. That's very good. Yeah, Devagrati, uh, we want to say something, and of course, I will hear from Papi also. Yeah. So just wanted to add to uh, what Dr. Gulati was also saying, and Mr. Jain was also saying. So in the STEM field, um, there is a bias. There is a preconceived notion that a man will be able to handle. Uh, a uh, complicated technology but uh, and i think iit plays a good deal in bringing that confidence as i was saying you keep on failing so much that you are used to you know all kinds of bad things happening in your life <laughs> <laughs> especially when you are doing phd and all those things so yeah exactly so you you are you are uh, trained to take all those things on you you know so um, but one and a good thing about having male colleagues male juniors is that once they and here you know sonia i would like to really uh, i mean appreciate what sonia said about the sisterhood once the male colleagues they realize that you are competent they go whole hearted they mm-hmm. they just they follow they will follow you through any you know fire that you can carry them you can take them but that initial bias needs to be broken which men don't have to that much worry about because of that brotherhood you know so <laughs> yes so so that that does play but once that uh, once that barrier gets broken it it it's the same it it can be a woman it can be a man especially in my field that i have i mean i have faced that yeah, yeah. Uh, miss papia you want to say something yeah since we are talking about stem field and engineers india limited uh, represents a good sample of stem field where all most of the at least 50 60% are engineers only and uh, we have almost 4000 near to 4000 employees our ceo is miss vartika shukla who is a woman maybe soon we will see another board member uh, woman and, and not only that not only that in all the other fields also like iocl refinery director is uh, ms shukla mistri she is again woman in hpcl also so things have changed drastically and i have also taken the charge of this leadership role or leading the group from very young age because maybe the seniors have found that i can manage and people have endorsed all the project and all the concerned divisions so i am also dealing and when i uh, uh, just uh, heard this question it was little bit uh, like does it happen even now so <laughs> i think cha- things have scenario has changed a lot thank you so much yeah dr rachna you want to say something yeah in fact i wanted to share something slightly amusing so while i'm not an engineer uh, i am from the you know the civil services proper but i worked in a department which was an engineering department so i was with the department of telecommunications and it was very interesting i was a science student uh, before i did economics and it was very easy for me to grasp topics and i found them very interesting so my subject today is digital technology and its regulation but it was very interesting to see people's reaction you know because they would be so disbelieving that you could actually comprehend so much and Yes, it is right, and 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 I, I do appreciate that point too. Because the minute you can show that you are very competent and you really understand, for some reason they don't expect you to. And I remember very distinctly, um, you know, I did this course with three uh, hundred and fifty male officers, which was the Defence Services Staff course. And before I did it, I asked another officer from the Civil Services that you know how was your experience. She said, "Don't worry, if you can spell your name, they'll be you know more than happy." So their expectations were so low. uh you know that uh, when you actually shine over there they are absolutely bold over so it is a very funny world it is still very much a man's world but i think we are getting there mm-hmm. yeah exactly uh, dr jyoti i would like to come in yeah sure yeah uh, thank you everybody uh, i actually appreciate the uh, 
<clears throat> experiences shared by all the panelists, but I do agree with uh, Papia that we actually don't need reservations for women. I agree. Yeah. However, I would like to hear from two people. One is, of course, Dr. Arshana Gulati about what policies, be, she being a civil servant is probably more con competent to answer this, that what policy changes do we expect from the government to ensure that the participation of women increases in every domain in our lives, point number one. And second point is open to everybody. Like in campus now we have around 20 to 25% of female students. In our days, in during our times, it was very less, maybe less than 10% or something. But nowadays we have 20 to 25% of female students. So as the secretary of the association, I would like to know from all of you, you being, you being the leaders, you have been the achievers of uh, from the women fraternity, what as an association can we do to encourage the upcoming generation of women who are making it to the campus, who are finding it a place in IIT Delhi and so that it transforms their life. So I want to listen from the perspective of the association that what we can do for them. That is the question which is open to everybody. Yes, thank you. Okay, so let me just address the policy question and I'm sure my fellow panelists would like to answer about uh, the association. Um, as a policy uh, matter, I think it's very important to educate girls right from you know childhood and to pay a lot of more emphasis on girls' education because unfortunately it is a fact that parents uh, in a large part of India in many, many um, you know, uh, sections of the society tend to educate their sons and overlook the education of girls. And maybe they educate them up to a certain level, up to a certain level of schooling, but they do not even consider that girls can be educated beyond that. Or even if they educate them, they don't really encourage them to work. And unfortunately, since I have traveled the length and breadth of the country, including the rural areas, I know that while this is changing, it is slow to change. Now, some of the ways of tackling this is, you know, use technology. So you have distance learning, uh, you have even, uh, you know, remote based jobs. So for example, I remember interacting with rural women in Rajasthan and they wanted their girls to study, but they were very worried about sending their girls to college because they just simply felt that the girls weren't safe in college. So I think as a society, we have to make sure that we're providing safe spaces for women to travel, to commute, to be able to study, to be able to work. It's the safety that parents are concerned about. It's not as if parents are not progressive. They don't want their girls to study, but it's a society that we live in, which is not very safe for women. So it is up to us to make it safe. And I think the same thing would apply to your campus also, because I do remember that the post I was mentioning where I, you know, I was the only woman amongst 350 men. There was no toilet for women in that campus, you know. So it's very simple and fundamental thing. But you to make women comfortable, you have to provide the facilities. You have to make them feel at ease. If there are working women, you have to provide creches for children. Uh, these are the very basic things that you need uh, to educate, you know, women to encourage them to continue to work, uh, you know, post maternity, and uh, of course, to support each other is the biggest thing that you can do. Thank you. Uh, I just have one small follow up because when you mentioned that uh, uh, as a woman, if you are working somewhere, uh, they feel that they are, they are not safe for that. The education is getting, you know, curtailed. So isn't it time now that we train our men, rather the boys, to make places safer for women. I mean, that is something we have always been a protective shield for women, but protection is not the key. The, the problem is somewhere else. We are addressing somewhere else. That is my uh, key submission. That's a very, 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 very valid point. How we bring up the boys in our society plays a huge role. So even in India, if you will notice, um, and I don't want to make a comment on, you know, different parts of India, but there are some parts of India, unfortunately, or fortunately, where they respect women more, where, you know, boys are brought up with a very strong mother and where they tend to have, you know, greater respect for women. So it is a society uh, character and it is up to women to bring up their sons properly, um, you know, and to encourage them to respect women. And I think when you are a role model yourself, um, it makes a difference too. Uh, how you treat your, um, you know, your wife, how you treat your uh, sisters, 
uh, all that makes a difference. That's why it is up to society, but you're 100% right that it is up to men to make uh, the world a safer place uh, for women. Because women can't just go there and risk, uh, you know, everything, you, no matter how much you may encourage. If uh, it's not safe, it's not safe. So I completely agree with you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Archana. And uh, Ms. Sonia, you want to uh, add something? Yeah, I wanted to answer uh, the second question that yes, was sure. raised. Yeah. So what as an association you could do, uh, as you say, you have about 20 to 25% of the women now in the campus. I would say that, uh, you know, uh, nurturing this young talent they must be facing a lot of challenges on their personal front. And if, if kind of a mentorship program can be started for them, right from their uh, you know, college days, to, if you associate them with uh, some of the uh, distinguished alumni who can uh, give them you know, guidance on their paths, and uh, I, I'm sorry, but I really go back to the sisterhood uh, campaign. <laughs> if you could uh, help in creation of such a uh, association within IIT itself and starting from the campus, then, you know, it will nurture in their uh, professional lives also. So that could be something that uh, uh, IIT can be a, uh, a uh, pioneer in starting uh, such a thing. Uh, I, and I, I really see that that network could be where they can fall back to share both their personal challenges and professional as they go forward. But that whole, and, and then bringing also an understanding of the biases that we talked about, because sorry to say, but I did not have a, even a knowledge of these biases that were existing. Uh, I came to know about them very, you know, almost uh, 10 years into my professional career uh, because I never thought they existed. And when, when I was exposed to them, I, I had already made certain, let's say, mistakes, which I shouldn't have. <laughs> so therefore, I would say that if the girls uh, are uh, exposed to this uh, from a very uh, early stage of their life, then they can uh, work on this path uh, better and they are uh, equipped with the tools that they can have in under their belt when they go and face the uh, world going forward. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Sonia. Uh, Ms. Papia, you wanted to say something? Uh, already, Ms. Sonia has covered okay. my point. I was also about to say about the mentorship. And IIT uh, Alum Alumni Association is doing really a great job. All the initiatives you are taking is hugely benefiting the upcoming generation. And I feel upcoming generation, especially the uh, girls and boys both, they're very clear about their ambitions. They're not lost. But even then, if sometimes they feel like lost or uh, need some direction, so as rightly uh, Ms. Sonia said, with some uh, esteemed faculty or some alumni, if you could uh, create a mentorship or coaching ca counseling kind of session, that would be helpful, I guess. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Yeah, I just wanted to add that we have a uh, mentorship program in the name of Sarathi for PG students that is uh, open to, it is basically not gender specific. However, as a part of our hostel interactions, I would certainly urge, I have written in the comment box also, that I would urge the women uh, alumni who are especially based in Delhi and CR that on some Sundays or something like that, they, you know, plan to visit the campus. We can have make necessary arrangements and we can have a counseling session or maybe some interactive sessions with the girls at Himadri and Kailash. That will be really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Pankaj. And uh, I think uh, I, there are no more questions from the audience. Then we can conclude the session. Do we have any other question? I think uh, we should conclude it now. And um, I, so would... I have a question. Yeah. Okay. What do people yes. think about the very first uh, woman director of an IIT, IIT Madras, that has just happened in the past week or so? And it's taken 70 years. 
for the IITs to appoint a woman as a director. Uh, I, I'm just curious about what people think about this. I have my own thoughts, but I just want to know. Thanks. I yeah. would just say better late than never. That's the thought that comes to me. Better late than never, but of course it is uh, late and uh, should have happened long time ago. Um, but yes, I would just say better late than never. I would say this exactly proves all the biases and the other things that we have been talking about since last one, one hour. So this exactly proves what what is there, the systemic uh, thing which is there in today's society. Thank you. We would like to have your thoughts on the point, yeah, Ms. Asha. This is what I was also thinking. <laughs> Uh, are we waiting for some comments or that I can add a comment? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I think, um, well, it is sad that it took such a long time, but at least it has happened. So I think it, it, we should look at it as something that is positive and we should hope that, you know, we don't have to wait again for so long and that this is going to break that, you know, uh, that glass ceiling forever and we're going to see many more women directors in all the IITs. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Am I no, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What I wanted to say is that I don't think it just happened just like that because IIT Madras has had a very strong women's group. Somebody here was talking about networking and sisterhood and this and that. They've had a very strong women's group for a long time. I went to do a study there in 2010 about this to compare the IIT with the MIT because you know after all the IITs were taking after the MIT and MIT there was a big thing happened you know there was a huge halabulu about no women numbers being small etc so I sort of try to ask similar questions in the IIT Madras and because there was this women's group there which included women faculty and staff it was very easy for me to get in and I did a, a it was a fairly decent study I spoke to a lot of women and I, many of the women, what they said is that we don't face any bias in terms because the MIT women said, you know, they have money, uh, salary discrimination, they have lab space discrimination, there was discrimination of that level. Somehow the IIT, because it's a government institution, there is no, if you are a professor, you get a professor's salary. There's no negotiation or anything like that. Lab space also, I think they were quite okay about. But where the problem started really is the informal networks through which people become to become a director first you have to become a dean you know head of department then you have to become a dean and after you become a dean and only you may get into the pool of people who may be considered to be a director so women don't even get to the level of head of department even if they're professors and that happens at informal network decision making levels so that is where you know so th that's what many of the women said they said we've been acting heads we've been acting chairs you know this that the other but only acting but when the person comes back, then we are no longer that. So this lady, the young woman, and she's very young, I think, who's become, is standing on the shoulders of those women and their fights there. You know, the IIT Madras women's group. I don't know whether it still exists because I haven't gone to IIT Madras recently. And by the way, I wanted to extend that study to all the IITs. And the proposal I wrote was, by looking at the problems in the older IITs, and I'm from IIT Delhi, a much, much ancient age that I think any of you, Oh. I was there from, as an undergraduate, I entered in 1975 when we were only five women in our batch. And I don't think the numbers have increased that much, that drastically in all these years. Someone saying it's 25% women on campus, but that could be because of the postgraduate level, because MSc, there were more women in those days. And PhD also, there were more women in those days. But the undergraduate population was always very small. And I don't think it's risen that much. You know, MIT also had similar figures in 75, but MIT by 2000 had become 50% undergraduate population because they consciously applied principles. They looked into the problem, they wanted to change the problem and they consciously applied principles to do that. IIT has never done it. I, I sent my proposal to uh, various IITs to see whether I could do the study with their support. 
And I was, uh, nobody was interested. And uh, the director of IIT Madras also was not interested. There was at that point a registrar or some top, top official who was interested, which is why I could get in and do the study to the level I did. But when I wanted to expand it further, uh, they were just not interested. So <clears throat> the feeling I have is this young woman, uh, she was at the right time, the right place, right spot, whatever you may call it. And that is because of all the work that went into IIT Madras for many years. I don't think it just happened out of the blue, or the goodness of the heart of the people who run IITs. And I think it's still very pale, it's very patriarchal, and uh, there are a lot of issues with it. I, I, I mean, you know, if I start talking about my years in IIT, I don't think I can paint such a beautiful picture that these other women are doing today. I mean, I'm quite happy to hear all this, that so much change has happened, except to say that, yes, it really toughens you. It really, really, really toughens you. And anything else that happens in life after that is so simple. You know, because IIT really toughens you, and um, as a woman and as as a as a person. So that's all I have to say. But nice to hear from all these women. So happy to see you guys, and uh, let's hope we have more meetings like this in yes. person also. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so <laughs> much you. for uh, uh, putting your views, and uh, definitely we are going to have you in one of our uh, she inspire session. Yeah, okay. I know, right. like, definitely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, there is one more uh, hand raised by... Uh, Dr. Gulati, are you there? You want to say something? Yes. I just want to accept that point about the sisterhood. And I think that was a very valid point uh, that has been raised. That there is this informal network uh, yes. that often operates, which acts to the benefit of men. And having experienced the same informal network with amongst women, I know that the feeling of comfort and confidence that you get when you have like you're reporting to a woman boss, you have women colleagues, and suddenly you feel that there is your own poetry. Uh, it's a very different experience. And I think, yes, uh, that is that really plays a role in disadvantaging women at times. And that needs to be tackled. And one of the ways of doing that is, of course, having more women on top. And the other is for women to actively support each other. So I completely agree with that. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. And uh, uh, I would like to end this session with the note. Uh, sisterhood is powerful. Women can support each other as women in their pursuit for enlightenment on anything uh, else uh, without fear. And the most beautiful woman in the world is the one who protects and support other women. And with this thought, I express my gratitude to all of you, the speakers, uh, the audiences, and uh, for giving your uh, valuable time for being with us. And I'm uh, very uh, thankful to you. And uh, we would like to uh, hear from you people uh, someday, other, uh, some other day also. And thank you uh, very much uh, for being with us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity also and the great work done by the association. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, for you. thank, thank, you, thank you, Dr. Jyoti. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for organizing this beautiful session. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all the panelists. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Bye.